I hope that you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, it is good to be um, back together, even as some of our community is making their way back to the city slowly. It is always good to be in the house of the Lord. The sermonic theme for today is the gift of compassion, the least of these, a subtitle. It's 1.15 at night in the last week of December. A train comes to a screeching halt at a station on the south side. A reporter on the scene describes it like this. From the all-coach train came an assortment of human beings, bewildered migrants who stepped out into the sub-zero cold for the first time in their lives. Small, sickly children clad in tattered garments which were no match for Chicago's bitter weather. This might sound like a typical scene from the last year of Chicago's humanitarian crisis as thousands of migrants have arrived from Texas, but these are the words of a reporter, Lloyd General, from the Chicago Defender, written in 1962, referring to black families from the South. The current humanitarian crisis is not the first time, it's not the first time that Chicago has seen an influx of people. Today's crisis is brought on by the Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott with the participation of Florida Governor Ron De Santiago. Likewise, in the 60s, Chicago and other northern cities were targeted by reverse freedom rides orchestrated by George Sigelman of the Greater New Orleans chapter of the White Supremacist and Segregationist White City Council. Both campaigns had the same goal, to strain the city's infrastructures of political opponents by sending hundreds of migrants to these cities. Both used destitute people as pawns in a political scheme, and both exposed cracks in the city's inability to assist migrants as well as their own population. Amazing, two different time periods, same impact, same strategy. This is where we enter the biblical text today. It is a harsh judgment in this text for those who do not respond compassionately to people in need. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. But for those who respond favorably, they are considered blessed in this text. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. It is about seeing others in need and responding to that need. The charge to care for the poor and the disadvantaged can be found throughout scriptures. We see it again and again in the gospel, but it is especially exhibited in the ministry of Jesus. There are only two categories here in the text today, those who respond and those who fail to see or respond to the needs of others, and in so doing, they have not followed in Jesus' footsteps. We are instructed to care for the least of these. But in modern times, the least of these is not politically correct. It just doesn't sound good. But the point of this phrase is to say that those who are really very vulnerable, those who are in vulnerable spaces that affect their livelihood and their ability to function, those who find themselves speaking up for injustices and targeted by the powers that be, those who have temporarily no ability to care for themselves. I'm sure that even as you all ponder about the least of these, some, someone, some group, some people come to mind. Whoever they are and wherever we encounter them. Our response is the same. Many advocates of the homeless in Chicago who have been fighting for services for years are bothered by the influx of migrants and the care they perceive this group of people to be receiving over and against the people that are already in our cities 
that are in need of services. There is a much larger group that perceives the migrants to be taking away resources from our own communities. Beyond our fighting on the ground was a very strategic effort on the part of politicians to have progressive cities in flux. They succeeded. We are now operating Americans from a space of scarcity. And it's funny because we were founded by so many migrants. All of us, if you go back far enough, come from somewhere. And it isn't America, is it? But we think we have our own to take care of. Charity begins at home. What about our homeless population? What about our problems? They took our parks from our kids. We don't have enough resources for them and us. They need to go back home. Some of them are living better than us. We don't have enough in our budget. Our mayor is talking to Biden. New York is only providing housing for 30 days. This crisis has caused clashes in the Chicago City Council, whose members have fought over how much to spend on the asylum seekers amidst other pressing priorities. It's a logistical nightmare, says Andre Basquez, the chairman of the city's committees on immigrant and refugee rights. This morning, I live about four blocks from the police district, so every day I drive by. And this morning with snow on the ground, cold, with my coat on, with layers, with earmuffs, with a wool coat, with a scarf wrapped around, with boots and socks on, I pass people that are living outside. You're going to see more and more people on the street figuring out a way to survive. And I ask myself, where is the compassion in that? At the Jewels grocery store, and that's where I shop because I love to get a good sale. I know some of you are all these people and some of you are Walmarts, but I find some good digital coupons in Jewels. And so I find myself at Jewels grocery store, and there are two doors at Jewels grocery store. There's an exit door and there's an entrance door. And sometimes, depending on where you park, you find yourself closer to one door than the other. Often where I park is where I want to be when I exit, and so often I'm closer to the exit door than I am to the entrance door. And sometimes I try to go in the exit door, but when I get to the exit door, the exit door doesn't yield to me because the exit door is for those that are trying to exit. If someone is coming, maybe, but oftentimes no one is coming, so I need to walk over to the entrance door. I think for us as Christians, the entrance door is compassion. When we see a need as best we can, we respond. Sometimes individually and sometimes as a group. But the entrance should be compassion. I was talking to a neighbor that is on our streets often, and he was telling me for Thanksgiving this year and every year, he goes to Vineyard Church. Every Thanksgiving, Vineyard, Vineyard, Vineyard Church serves a Thanksgiving meal. And he says it's sporadically attended. But this year, he says it was full because there were migrants. Every chair had a seat. There were no leftovers. They served everyone. That's an entrance. We have made flyers in Spanish. That's an entrance. Other churches are serving in our city. That's an entrance. St. Paul the Redeemer is seeing more and more folks come to their food pantry. That's an entrance. All of these groups have always already served the least. And it doesn't matter if they're from the south side of Chicago or if they're from South America. Same command, amen? The entrance for us has always been about compassion for the least of these, period. The text reminds us today that the blessed ones have demonstrated their faithfulness by performing acts of compassion. Let your heart be troubled. Let your heart respond. Let your heart be perplexed with what is going on in our world. Let us enter through the entrance door and not try to exit because the exit is the quicker way inside. But it's not where we're supposed to be. This is the way of Jesus. I was hungry and you? I was thirsty. I was a stranger in a whole new world. Amen. 
I was without proper clothing. And I was so impressed yesterday when we walked in and there were clothes on the table. I was in prison and you didn't forget about me. You stopped by. You saw me. You saw Christ the King. Your compassion touches not only others, but it touches our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we don't have to do an either or. We don't have to say either these folks or these folks. Because what is happening in Myanmar touches me. What is happening with transviolent touches us. What is happening with the homeless in Chicago touches us. What is happening with people who are fleeing countries here, it can also touch us. Yesterday, I was in the grocery store. Y'all know where it was. Where was I? You got it. It looked like the store had been raided by you all. There was like nothing in the store. I was like, what am I going to eat? I may not have gotten a physical meal, but I got a spiritual meal yesterday. The Lord allowed me to see compassion in action. I was in one line, and there was this young Venezuelan couple in the line next to me, dressed up in donated clothes. They were getting less than me, which equals one measly bag with a few items in it. The lady had on no coat, and the man bagging insensitively inquired, where is your coat? That was okay, because she spoke absolutely no English and indicated so with her hands and her non-response. When they were done, the cashier handed them back a few dollars, and from those dollars, the man took a dollar and placed it in the bag man's hand, smiling. This was like the widow's might to me. Here was something someone perhaps perceived as the least of these, and yet with his few dollars, he took a dollar from his stash and gave it back and smiled and patted the bag man on his back. The cashier later said to the bag man, there you go, you've always been asking for a tip. From his little, he saw the service of the bag man. And I, in turn, saw the gift of compassion. It is not reserved for this person or that person. It is the movement of the heart pricked by God to unconditionally walk through the door of compassion. Amen.